Hi everyone and welcome to another digital piano review here at Marion Pianos on YouTube. My name is Stu Harrison and today we're looking at Kawhi's CA-59. It's the big brother to the CA-49, fits right into the overall CA line and really packs a huge value punch for the price point. So we're going to be talking about its sound, its sound engine, all the components, the action, uh, really a fairly thorough and detailed examination of what makes this instrument tick and why you might like it. Uh, if it's the first time to the channel, we would really appreciate it if you, if you did subscribe, if you like what you see, if you find it useful. Uh, leave us a comment, participate in the community, uh, and come back for more videos in the future. We really love to see this growing group of people so enthusiastic about pianos. So without further ado, let's get started with the CA-59 right away. So as we normally do, we're gonna start with sound on the CA-59. Uh, this instrument is super capable in so many different ways when we're talking about sound. Um, first, from the tone production side of things. Uh, the CA-49, 59, 79, 99, uh, even the CN series that Kawhi has out uh, in the year 2020, and, and pr presumably this is gonna continue beyond, uh, they've got a collaboration with Onkyo happening right now. Onkyo is, uh, I don't think it's like the absolute Rolls Royce of audiophile companies, but they're really well respected. I mean, it's, I think they're owned now by Pioneer, which is another uh, name, sort of, let's call it like an upper, you know, upper mid-level um, hi-fi stereo company who makes really great amplifiers. Um, they make great receivers. Uh, you know, if you were to walk into a Best Buy, they're probably going to be like the most expensive one you can get at a Best Buy. That's kind of the range uh, that we're talking about with, with Onkyo. And so they have collaborated with Kawhi on virtually the whole powertrain. I'm calling it the powertrain, but you know, the whole chain of gear required to generate a digital audio signal within these pianos. So they've got digital signal processing that they've contributed to uh, with chipsets uh, that are part of the motherboard. They've contributed amplifiers, they've contributed speakers themselves, uh, as well as a discrete headphone amplifier where you've got uh, signal processing specifically designed uh, to accommodate different types of headphones. It's all in there and it's all from Onkyo. And so the CA-59 brings that to bear. Uh, that's the same as what you'd get on any of the other CAs. So where is the unique parts of the CA-59 compared to where it sits in uh, with the rest of the line? Well, first thing is this uh, has 100 watts of output power, which is pretty significant. So it's a pair of uh, 50 watt, or I should probably clarify that. It's a pair of 50 watt uh, amplifiers that are driving four speakers. Uh, I know it te that technically doesn't equal 100 watts of, of uh, output power. Although on Kawhi's website, it does say that it's 100 watts. So maybe somebody who really um, is a, a kind of a sound engineer can chime in here and explain, does a pair of 50 watt amplifiers equal 100 watts of output or is it still just 50 watts of output? Let us know, that would be helpful. I would find that helpful. Um, so we've got uh, four speakers and uh, with two amplifiers and that makes it more than twice as powerful is what you're getting in the CA-49 which is a pair of 20 watt amplifiers and you can definitely tell. Uh, just like a guitar amp, when you have a digital piano with really nicely balanced amplifiers and crossovers and all of that, having more power doesn't automatically mean that it's just louder. Even at a lower volume, you just get more presence. You just get more uh, bottom end to the sound. It's exactly what's happening here on, on the CA-59.
Now Kawhi's contribution to this, of course, is their harmonic imaging chip. And there's many different generations of harmonic imaging. And currently, right now, in their whole lineup, I think there's even four different levels of harmonic imaging. So these are just different uh, kind of levels of um, sophistication or complexity in that tone generation um, module uh, that, that are in the digital pianos. So this is the harmonic imaging XL. It's one step up from the progressive harmonic imaging. Uh, and so that just adds even more parameters uh, that it's uh, sort of synthesizing on top of the core sample um, with its acoustic piano sounds. So there's more parameters to modify in the virtual technician. There are more elements to the sound other than the core tone that's adding a nuance that sort of surrounds the tone in this versus the progressive. It also means that you get more maximum polyphony. So this is 256 notes of maximum polyphony right through its entire sound set, both the acoustic piano uh, as well as through the rest of its 44 uh, sounds that it has in total. Uh, so we've got a better uh, max polyphony, we've got more amplifier guts, we've got better speakers, the whole sort of audio chain uh, is either completely contributed to by or uh, collaborated with uh, Onkyo, uh, and you just get a nice, tight, beautifully uh, balanced tone uh, through virtually all of the different sounds that you have on this instrument. Now, another thing that you get with the XL chip is do you get a full uh, individual note sample, multi-layer sample on the SKEX, the EX, but you also get an SK5. So there's a third piano that they fully sampled top to bottom. And I don't want to go on too long about this, but it's, it does make a difference. Regardless of what instrument you're talking about, whether you're talking about a, a Yamaha, or you're talking about a Kawhi, or you're talking about a Casio, or you're talking about uh, Nord, or I mean, any digital piano out there, even software um, uh, like VSTs that you can use with your DAW system, uh, when you have individual notes that have been sampled, especially multi-layer individual note samples, it's a big deal for when you're trying to capture an acoustic piano, because any acoustic player will know that even amazing pianos, there are slight differences in the tone from one note to another. It's almost the imperfections that make it better in a lot of ways. Uh, and particularly when you're doing things like switching from the notes that have dampers to the notes that don't have dampers, and when you're switching from slightly uh, thinner uh, uh, piano wire to thicker piano wire when it switches into the uh, the brass or sorry the copper wound wire and then from the triple to the uh, you know the bi chords to the single uh, you know piano string way in the bass they all have slightly different character changes and so when you can capture all 88 notes every single one of them you're going to get a really accurate picture of what that is so this has three different types of pianos where they've gone through that process and you can enjoy it uh, here on the CA-59. And so the first one is the SKEX, and that's what you've been hearing already a little bit. Um. And here's the EX. And here's the SK-5 that we were talking about.
then you get into the more traditional sounds that you find really on most of the Kawhi digital pianos, regardless of what line it is. So now we're into jazz clean. I swear, sometimes even if it just says jazz, it makes you just try and play something jazzy. I'm sure if it said Christmas piano in July, I'd be just, I'd flip on that and immediately start playing a Christmas tune. So this is warm piano, warm grand two. Now when you get onto a piano like the CA-59 where you've got a larger display and it's really easy to access this stuff, honestly I don't know why you would move off those first three because even if you wanted a slightly different character to what they have, they have what's called smart mode in the virtual technician which is really just presets that pull up all sorts of different conditions in those different variables. Uh, and so you can get, well here I'll, let's talk about it. So let's go back to the SK concert grand, which is sort of the default sound. And I enter the virtual technician by pressing the, the first button. And the very first mode that comes up is smart mode. Um, now, to get into smart mode, you just press number two. It says, like, to get in smart mode, press number two. Pretty self-explanatory uh, menu system. And this is where you can start to get dramatically different characters out of the same sample set. And it's actually an excellent way to demonstrate the power of what the Harmonic Imaging XL engine is actually doing. Because when you think about it, everything you're about to hear is coming out of exactly the same sample set. So this is just the normal one. And I, sorry, I, in advance, I will do my very best to play exactly the same thing uh, to make these comparisons a little more useful. Um, let's just play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. At least I, that I can be pretty confident I can do the same. Um, Okay, so that was normal. Now, here's noiseless. And then deep resonance. Light resonance. Soft. Doesn't really sound that much more soft. Brilliant. Dark. You get the idea. I, 
I guess we're almost right to the end. That's just smart mode. I'm not even going in there and manually configuring any of those individual parameters. Those are just presets. And that's just off the one sample. So you get my point wh why you would ever leave those three because you can definitely find your ideal, your perfect piano playing experience uh, really without leaving those three as the base character and then going into something like the virtual technician and just going nuts, having a ton of fun. Uh, once we get out of the piano mode, because it does have a few more sounds other than just pianos, uh, you get into some of the nicer stuff that Kawhi uh, puts on a lot of their instruments. I like their classic EP sound a lot. Sixties, which is usually just a whirly. And then of course you've got editable effects on all of these as well. So there's like the DX, sort of a bit of a phaser there. Oh, what is that? Michael McDonald. Was it taking it to the streets or something? Like anyway. I, uh, so all kinds of really cool stuff. Lots of organ patches. With your left pedal automatically triggered to the rotary speaker. Those are solid. Our standard harpsichord and mallet sounds in there, strings, and bass and some guitar. So a few other things to have some fun in there. All of these things can be saved as presets because you can layer it on top of one another, you can split the piano. Uh, and like I said, the uh, user interface has been designed so that all of these different sound options are pretty easy to access as well. We are going to move on to action now, but thank you so much for being with us so far looking at Kawhi CA-59. We're going to throw some of these specs up on the screen for you so you can have another visual reference and we'll be back in just a second. So the action in the CA-59 is the Grand Feel Compact. It's, when you look at the Grand Feel Compact, it doesn't look that different than some of the other Grand Feel actions that Kawhi has out there, except that it's just a little bit shorter. So the key stick isn't the full length. Uh, it's, uh, I think, quite a bit shorter. Um, but it does have a triple action, uh, which is certainly a good thing. It also has a statement, which for some players will be a good thing. And uh, not that it's a bad thing for anybody, but some people, I, I don't think it's a huge um, meaningful differentiator, but it's got it there. Uh, and you've got a nice matte finish on the white keys as well as the black keys. So it's, it's sort of that nice balance between something that's still got some grip, but you've got enough slip so that depending on the type of repertoire you're doing, it's really easy to navigate. Something I uh, particularly like about the Kawhi white keys 
And this goes for both their RH3 action as well as their grand feel actions generally, is that they round off the edges of the white keys. And so when you're getting into, all manufacturers do it to an extent, but for some reason I like the way that, the, that Kawhi does it, probably the best of any of the manufacturers. Um, and I mean, I, I play a rolling board for my shows and I've played on a gajillion Yamahas and uh, a lot more Casios in the last little while, Nords, all that stuff. The, the, the way that Kawhi rounds these white keys makes playing uh, some of the wider, uh, thicker voicings for say jazz, R&B, and certainly some late romantic classical stuff uh, a lot more comfortable. Because after a while, like you play a two hour show, three hour show, and you're doing, you know, tenths, you know, root five tenth, you know, in your left hand all over the place, or you're playing some, some various voicings where you, you've just got the inside of certain fingers rubbing down against the edges of the white key. This is a way more comfortable. It just, there's no cut at all. It's nicely rounded. So that's worth a mention for people who, out there who maybe didn't even realize that there were differences between the manufacturers in terms of how their white keys are. Uh, the triple sensor makes this uh, really ideal uh, to use as an input device for either another instrument or working with a DAW. And again, it's the other benefit is it's just more accurate when you're uh, getting into uh, quicker repetition speeds and something that's a bit more uh, violent or you know a, a bit more percussive. So that's the action. We're going to do one last third section as we often do uh, to discuss some of those other, uh, they're musical but maybe not uh, up front and center features uh, that are still relevant to the shopping experience. So uh, once again, thank you for being with us. We'll be back in about 10 seconds with our final wrap up on the CA-59. So the 59 offers some welcome uh, connectivity options, some other welcome features that are worth mentioning. Uh, the first thing is that there are uh, quarter inch stereo line outs. There's also quarter inch stereo line ins, which is not particularly common, as well as your quarter inch headphone and eighth inch or 3.5 mil uh, headphone jacks. So you don't have to worry about splitting jacks or getting crazy adapters to get this either hooked up into a PA system or using it uh, for, for headphone use. Uh, I know the CA-59 has been pretty popular in the worship community. And so if you are in a relatively small you know, worship center, some sort of a uh, sanctuary hall, uh, this can hook up to your PA system without having to worry about uh, defeating the local speakers. So you kind of self monitor with the speakers on here and then you've got the PA uh, taking the line outs. This also has both USB uh, A as well as USB type B, uh, type A, type B ports. So you can get a USB key here for local recording. That'll record both Wave MP3 as well as MIDI files straight on there. That's really handy. I know a lot of teachers who use that feature to quickly uh, create practice tracks or reference tracks for their students. And without having to you know, get it into a DAW and re-export it, I mean, you just put the key there, send it, and your student has a USB key there with an MP3 on it right uh, you know, already. Easy to play, no extra encoding needed. Um, this also has both Bluetooth MIDI as well as Bluetooth audio, which means you can broadcast from a Bluetooth enabled device, uh, you know, iPad, Android phone, smartphone, most of them have it at this point, and you can cast your music and use these speakers, which are pretty high quality speakers, um, as a stereo. And so a lot of people just to save space as well as just to take advantage of the fact that you've more or less you've got an Onkyo stereo system, which is pretty high in stereo system just on its own. You can use that to just play music in your home and you don't have to have an extra stereo in the room. Big space saver. So that's kind of a cool feature as well. This is loaded with a ton of uh, uh, repertoire and a ton of method book repertoire already built in so that if you are uh, learning something along with the teacher and you're using one of those it's like 20 or something different method books. Um, a lot of those first introductory books, all of the practice passages are already in here, all the pieces are already in here. So you can really use this as a practice companion. It's very, very handy. It's also got all of the standard stuff that you would kind of at this point think are no brainer, but it's still worth mentioning. It transposes, it's got metronome, it's got some beats um, in there as well. 
Uh, it has the ability to split the keyboard, to layer sounds on top of one another. And then the very last feature I'm going to mention is the pedals. This uses a grand feel pedal system, meaning that all three pedals, the spring tension is matched to the spring tension that you actually get on a real grand piano. Finally, this comes in three different colors. It comes in the rosewood that you're seeing right here. Kawhi makes a satin black, uh, which they actually match with like a silver uh, color tone on the pedals as well as the logo. And then it comes in white. So I think Kawhi has photos of a lot of these on their manufacturer website. Uh, so you can check that out as well. Thank you so much for tuning in for our review of the CA-59. It's an instrument that I think actually packs a tremendous punch uh, for the value, considering what the step up to get into the CA-79 is from the CA-59. Um, you're getting uh, some really fantastic speakers already in the CA-59, and if you don't need uh, the touchpad, and uh, if your ear can't really hear or prefer the difference getting into the rendering engine that the CA-79 has, you're getting a lot of the core functionality that the CA-79 has right here on the CA-59. Um, great action, great speaker system, um, obviously great acoustic piano tone. So, hope it's helped. Hope to see you back for more piano videos in the future. If you haven't already subscribed yet, we would really encourage you to do so. Hit that notification bell. YouTube likes it, but more than that, we like to see you back for views. We like to see you back participating in the community, leaving us comments, uh, and just enjoying all things piano, just like we do. So thank you again for watching, and we will see you back for more videos shortly.